So this is the start of the death road, but the weather up at this top section does not look very good. Hi, I'm Lavi. And I'm Ollie. And this is our hero, Bumblebee. Together, we are attempting a Guinness World Record to become the youngest pair to circumnavigate the globe by, by motorcycle. motorcycle. Join us for season three here in South America. Okay, this is what it looks like when you have to take down all of your equipment all in one go. What an awesome room, hey? Bye bye, most beautiful apartment in the world. <laughs> this was our view for the last five days. See the church the city skyline over there. We're up on the fifth floor, it's beautiful. We actually got an upgraded room because the previous room had a leak in the ceiling and that was that room. And then they said, okay, we're gonna move you to this room. And this one was a triple room with a better view. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, hitting the roads of La Paz, let's do it on a nice Sunday. <laughs> Empty roads! Yeah, this is definitely a good day to ride around the city. Oh, definitely. Good morning world! Welcome back to the channel. It's day number 316 on our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle. We're here in the crazy busy center of La Paz in Bolivia and uh, we've already been refused petrol this morning, which is a bit strange, but we had heard that locals are quite hesitant to uh, give fuel to foreigners. Locals actually have a discounted rate. It's a government subsidized rate. And for foreigners, the rate is like triple the local rate. And so they have to like fill in loads of details in the machine and say, we're filling up for a foreign vehicle. And a lot of petrol station attendants, they basically say, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> we have spent actually the last five days here in La Paz. It wasn't our intention to spend that much time here, but we got food poisoning, both of us, with our nice vegetarian meal. So today was our death road day, but we're laying dead in the bed already because yesterday we had a meal outside and yeah, we came back and our buried bellies were really aching. And the whole night we were just like, you know, throwing up and going to the toilet. Yeah, can you believe it? <laughs> no, I absolutely can't believe it. But anyway, we got food poisoning and then we were like in bed for like two days. We it couldn't was not move. a very good time, I can assure you. Oh. So yeah, it was pretty hectic, but we're feeling all right now. That's good. And we are definitely ready to hit the road again. And we have a really, really, really exciting day today because we are heading to the famous death road here in Bolivia. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be absolutely awesome. So let me show you guys the route for today. We finally have a map of Bolivia so we are here in La Paz and today we are going to be making our way over to the mountains to take on the death road before returning to La Paz heading back down to Patacamaya where we will be turning off and heading towards the border of Chile but look at all these food places yeah it looks nice hey oh man look at this car just come straight past me yeah it's an incredibly busy morning in La Paz <laughs> and the entrance to the death road is 66 miles away but man I do not know how long it's going to take us to get out of the city probably the whole day oh my god and it's a Sunday we chose to leave on this day we were like wow Sunday will be a great day because the roads will be nice and empty it'll be good but no it's the same <laughs> yeah it's the same so, or maybe even worse so we have another setback in our plans as well 
and that is that the border between Bolivia and Peru that we were going to take at Lake Titicaca is actually closed at the moment so Peru is going through some political turmoil at the moment and there's a lot of protests there's a lot of violence and there's a lot of areas basically that you can't go and one of those areas is right in front of the border between Bolivia and Peru so basically the government has closed that border so it means that our only option is to take the border between Bolivia and Chile so back into Chile for like the 10th time and then take the border between Chile and Peru at Arica but what it does mean is it's going to add nearly a thousand miles onto our journey so it is a big detour yeah but before we left Bolivia we still wanted to take on this death road we'd been wanting to take it on since we got to La Paz yes I remember when I was a child and there was a documentary on the TV about the death road when, it's when it was actually still um, used by people so <laughs> I had some flashbacks and I'm like hey that's so cool that we actually know uh, can drive the death road so it looks like it's going to be a super busy but super exciting and quite scary day today i'm ready for it yeah and it's already 10 45 so better hit the road let's go and then stuck in the traffic <laughs> <laughs> better hit the road let's go <laughs> oh look at this but it's a really nice market here actually on the side of the road you can buy anything and everything Yes, she gave us fuel. Whoa, thank you. We basically said to her, oh, is it okay, nine bolivianos a litre, which is triple the local price. And she was just like, yeah, that's fine. And yeah. we don't even know if she put it through the system as a foreign price or whatever, or if she took the difference. But anyway, good for her, that's fine. I'm happy for them if they can just keep it. And also at the beginning I said to her, oh, we don't need a receipt, it's fine. Exactly. Nine bolivianos, triple the price, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, just trying to encourage them, just give us fuel, please. Yeah. Because man, we can't keep riding to different petrol stations in the city, that's insane. Well, we're starting to get up and out of the city a little bit more now. We're heading yeah. up into the hills. So wow, that's good. the hills, they look stunning around here. Absolutely but, stunning. But despite our illness over the last few days, we at least got to have one day to have a look around La Paz, which was nice. And when we rode in, we noticed they had the cable car system. So we said, oh my God, that is the way that we have to go around the city. And we did. <laughs> Que ella no está puesto para el amor Yeah, yeah Pero eso cambiará cuando ella me vea, Porque lo sepas Que ella me ha cupido a pedirle un favor Yeah, 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 yeah Esperando tu DM Pa' que invites una ronda más Pa' que su labio me desea Y se repita lo de So we saw La Paz from above and it was absolutely spectacular. What a crazy, crazy city. I don't like riding in it, but seeing it from above in the comfort of a cable car is absolutely awesome. Yeah, it was really, really cool. But oh my God, we went as well to the witch market. There were like baby llama fetuses everywhere. It was absolutely insane. I yeah. mean, this place was crazy, but mm -hmm. super interesting to see. I actually found out that they used the baby fertus to build in their house. When they built a new house, they put it in there, in no the foundation. No way. Are yes. you serious? Yeah. And it's like for protection. But it didn't protect the baby llama very much, yeah. did it? No. Yeah, pretty crazy. Wow. We're out of the city! Woo -woo! We've just passed the payage barrier heading out and into the mountains and look how clear the roads are! Beautiful! Oh, it's like a dream! Yeah, it is a dream! And you have already massive and epic mountain views! So first we're heading to a town called Koryoko and that is actually where the start of the death road is now you can start on either side of the death road one entrance oh look they're waving at us hello <laughs> <laughs> 
So you can either start at the top of the death road or at the bottom of the death road. But the interesting thing about the death road is that the traffic flow is the opposite to the normal road. So if you're heading downhill, instead of being on the, in the, on the right like we are now, you're actually on the left. Now the left side is the cliff side, the really, really, really crazy high and dangerous cliff side. So basically, if you're heading downhill on the death road and you, fight, and you pass another car, you have to be on the cliff side and the car or motorbike or whatever coming up is on the inside. So for that reason, we decided that we will take the death road from the bottom to the top. And that means we'll be on the left, always against the cliff. And if we find a car coming up to us or our bicycles or motorbike, then we will be safely against the cliff edge. And there we'll be on the dangerous outside. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Plus as well, going uphill, I believe you've got a bit more control than going downhill. Going downhill, you basically have to keep the brakes on nearly the whole time. You've got the issue of maybe slipping. And you know, with this bike being as heavy as it is, we just can't risk that, so. I mean, we dropped Bumblebee already a few times. And to drop it on the death road, it wouldn't be very wise, I guess. No, this road is incredibly narrow at points and that drop is nothing to be taken lightly. That is a really, really dangerous drop on the side. So first we've got to make our way over to the small village called Korioko and then the party starts. Look at that, we can't even see the top of the mountain here. It's just in the clouds. Crazy, man. Oh no, we've just come over the pass and it's raining on the other side. Oh, it's incredibly wet over here. This is terrible. That is actually terrible, yeah. And we can't see anything. Oh man. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to get to this town and see how, how the weather is down there because this looks absolutely terrible yeah. conditions to take on the death roads. Yeah. I mean, it was so sunny and nice on the other side, and that's why we were like, oh, it's a great day, let's go, let's go, let's do it. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know anymore. <laughs> Splash plate. Oh. So this is the start of the death road. So this is where you would start if you're heading from the top, heading downhill, but the weather up at this top section does not look very good. So still not 100% sure what to do. Levy's trying to ask these guys over here if, uh, if the weather will get better. <laughs> We're actually considering now just starting at the top and rolling down because we're here. Hola. Yes. Today is not possible because the, the road is closed. Oh, the road is closed. There is the landscape. So you can't you can't get to the bottom. Today huh? is not possible. Today is not possible. Yes. Thank you so much for letting us you know. You can come back for the new road. Yes. It's possible. To Corioco. Yes. Ah. When did the landslide happen? Approximately just two days ago. Okay. Thank you. Thank Gracias. You so much. Thank you. 
the dream is over yeah it looks really that all signs are against us going down or up this road unfortunately but instead we bought some crisps <laughs> So we're having a little snack break here and try to get over the big big disappointment I mean we were so happy to go to the <laughs> salt lakes We were so happy to go here to the death road and like both things are not very um, Recommendable in the wet season. So please guys Come here in the dry season. Sometimes you just can't go against mother nature and we just have to accept it yeah we have to go with the flow and that means we actually will turn around and head to our real destination to head to the border to Chile yeah and at least we can say that when we get back over that way that there's going to be no rain because we're heading towards the Atacama Desert <laughs> yes I'm actually excited for that so that is it from the death road here in Bolivia Bye -bye. disappointment but I actually spoke to one of the workers that was coming up the road in a truck and uh, he told me that this landslide is a massive landslide and he told me that it's still ongoing now and because of the wetness and the rain the landslide is just continuing they can't start working on it they can't uh, do anything basically he basically said to us i advise that you don't start going down because you're only going to have to turn around and come all the way back up again and even turning around on that road is going to be incredibly difficult so anyway we're going to make our way back over to La Paz now back over to the sunny side of the mountains which I'm super excited about but at least we got to see the beginning of the death road and we can be sure that someone somewhere does not want us to ride that road I can't see anything <laughs> so we thought we'd take the opportunity before leaving the rainiest wettest place in the world we're gonna fill up our water here because this is beautiful fresh rainforest mountain water and we can't say no to that oh my goodness Woo. <laughs> oh. Wow. it's a good job i've got all my rain gear on eh I think the water went inside this glove oh, okay. <laughs> Yes I am completely wet hey huh. Some beautiful fresh mountain water We're back on the sunny side of the mountain. Yeah, it's still very cold though, but at least it's not raining anymore. Yeah, I didn't realize until I saw the sign that this pass from La Paz over to the death row that we just crossed is actually 4,650 meters high, which means it's the second highest pass we'll have ever taken. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, it was pretty hectic and a little bit disappointing as well that we couldn't take the death road but i mean we had so many signs you know there were so many obstacles for us it was like don't go to the death road don't go to the death road don't go to the death road <laughs> we yeah. actually came to the start of the death road and right there it tells us a person literally comes and tells us don't do it <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely going to come back for a series that's going to be called bolivia in the dry season <laughs> and we're going to go on sala de uni and we're going to do the death road oh. and we're going to stay dry the whole time for sure <laughs>
we just stopped here for a snack in the town of Pat Patakama Patakamaya. <laughs> <laughs> and this town is the turn off towards the Chilean border. So we've looked on iOverlander and we found a hostel about 60 miles closer to the border. So we decided that we're going to make one last push for today. So tomorrow we're going to Chile. But it's really hard to find like anything around here. We just wanted to stop, have a coffee, have a sandwich, but there's like no good options here. So we just had to settle for a pack of crisps. It's a hard life as a vegetarian, hey? It's a hard life. But there are always some nice potato chips. Also, can you see some difference about Oli? <laughs> oh, the boy is getting a haircut. Woohoo! But it's so funny actually because it took him like 30 minutes and then I checked afterwards and I think he forgot like something in the back here. His barbershop looked really cool so... That's true, he was really friendly and really nice. I liked him a lot. This is my first haircut in such a long time as well. Man, I think you're gonna have to get some scissors and touch it up later, hey? Yeah. You can see there's a... Super Mercado over here. Oh, my helmet is so squeaky. Let's see what they've got. Oh, hola, buenas. Uh -huh. Quite a lot of stuff, actually. This is one of the biggest shops we've seen in Bolivia so far. Oh, noodles. Yeah, can't go wrong with some of those. And then maybe some cookies for dessert. <laughs> Is that really five Bolivianos? Wow, <clears throat> it's really cheap. This one. What else have they got? What else have they got? Some juice. Oh, a can of peas to go with our noodles. Yes, please. That'll do for tonight. Beautiful. Gracias. Here we go. I got us dinner and dessert. Hiya. I think I finally have my front camera working again because I couldn't get it to turn on all the way since we had that snack break. Anyway, we had to go around in circles quite a few times, but we finally found Hostel Cariwara, which is right here. And apparently we have a place to park Bumblebee as well. Hola. Whoa! It's a puma! It's a puma! Yes! He said that this area here, Hola. puma. Hola! Hola, buenas! Hola, como estas? <laughs> Muy bien! Oli, Oli, mucho gusto, mucho gusto! Robert! Robert! Ah, uh, Patricia! Ah, uh, mucho gusto! Looks like we found ourselves a room for the night! Go! 
Good evening, guys. We made it. Happy and alive. Yes. Whee! Yeah, we were going round and round and round this town trying to find this uh, hostel, which at first we thought was like 5Ks down that way. Then we went back into town and then we reached like a military border post. Hostel, Aki? It's okay, Aki? No. No? Aki? Aki? This way. Okay, this way. Okay. That's it. He was like, no, not this way. But eventually we found it and we're here. Yeah, it's a really, really nice place actually with two little cute kids running around. They're trying to talk to us, but we don't understand anything. <laughs> and there's a cute little dog and a little cat that they keep playing with. Yes, yes. And the dog's name is Apple. Yeah. Apple. Hello. Oh. oh. <laughs> They're just preparing our room at the moment. I don't know if they were expecting guests, but it's good. We at least have a room for tonight. Yes. So we have decided to take some rooms for the next uh, three to four days, actually, because we have to make a lot of distance. 1,000 miles detour. Exactly. It's like a massive detour. And we are so far behind schedule now that we said, OK, let's try to get up tomorrow morning very early. Let's try to smash out some case. Let's not waste any time. Yeah, because taking rooms, we can just quickly get the stuff off the bike put it in the room next morning at sunrise we put it back on the bike and hit the road and we have a lot of miles to cover so it's going to really benefit us so now we are about 60 miles from the chilean border so we reckon that tomorrow we might be able to do a double border crossing crossing over to chile and then up and crossing over at arica to peru as well we'll see if we can make it in one day it's going to be interesting to try and that's it from us today at the end we did 200 miles we hope you enjoyed the video if so please give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel share the video with your friends and family comment below and if you really 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 like our videos then you can join us on patreon the link is in the description below we will see you next time guys look at this nice room here everything's so nice and clean and a light and we have a little bathroom as well oh look at that and it's as well just 50 bolivianos which is about i think it's about six pounds yeah amazing it's a good price yes for this place and a place a secure place for bumblebee and guys i just want to point it out again that our travel kettle is absolutely our superstar because we can have noodles for dinner like super cheap and we can have coffee in the morning as well super cheap so if you want to travel cheap and you take some rooms get a kettle <laughs> it's amazing and ollie's working hard <laughs> exactly. loading on the footage of the day yeah <laughs> <laughs>